I can't be the only one who sees this comparison, right? Hello my faithful watchers and welcome to my review of Doctor Who Series 11 Episode 2 The Ghost Monument, written by Chris Chibnall and directed by Mark Tonderai. I hope I pronounced that right. Now, as usual, there will be spoilers for this episode, so if you're not caught up, be sure to check the episode out first, then come back here. Okay, welcome back. Picking up from last week's episode, the Doctor, Graham, Yasmin and Ryan are picked up in space by pilots Angstrom and Ebso, played by Susan Lynch and Sean Dooley, who are competing in the last ever Rally of the Twelve Galaxies, set in stone by Ilin, played by Art Malik, who sets the titular Ghost Monument, which turns out to be the Doctor's TARDIS, as the prize. The winner will be rewarded by being free of the planet and a destination of their choice. Can the Doctor and co stay alive long enough in a hostile environment to solve the mystery of desolation? Let's find out. Before I review the episode itself, I feel I should talk about the two most notable new additions to the series, and that is the new titles and TARDIS interior and exterior. Positives first, so we'll discuss the titles. Now, I really enjoy them, and they go really well with Akinola's music. Uh, they're cinematic, bombastic, colourful, and it just gets you excited for the episode ahead. Plus, I, I should also mention that there is a lack of TARDIS or Doctor's face, but that didn't bother me too much, as they're able to stand on their own, and even reminded me of the original 1963 titles. My only complaint is that they didn't go on longer, as I would love to see more of these titles and hear more of that sweet, sweet music. Oh. Now, let's just jump ahead to the end of the episode by talking about the new TARDIS interior. Judging from the reaction on Twitter, quite a lot of fans seem to like it. Me, personally, I'm a bit more mixed. I like how the classic roundels, or the round things as they're known by fans, look like cogs you'd find in a clock because, well, it's a time machine and clocks are used to measure time. But the console itself didn't really grab me. It looks too yellow and really low down, almost as if it's a kid's amusement park ride. It's like if they're supposed to operate it. Now, I do like the idea of the inside looking as if it was grown, and it does look nice, but it kind of lacks a screen presence for me. But maybe I just have to get used to it a bit more. But my first impression so far, I'm not a huge fan. Now, with those elements out of the way, let's talk about what I thought of the story itself. As stories go, it reminded me a bit of the 1983 story Enlightenment, in which e ephemeral beings known as the Eternals compete for their heart's desire simply because they're bored. Though in this episode's case, it's space pilots, not ephemeral beings pretending to be British sailors. The story did feel quite episodic in nature, as we were hopping from one location to another, encountering new dangers along the way. While some may find it disjointed, I quite like this road trip type of story, and I'm all for that, and it felt like a proper adventure to me. Where the story felt weak for me was its villains. While I felt Art Malik gave a good performance as Illin for what he was given, I felt we didn't get to know him much, and should have had more of an impact as opposed to just giving out the plot and exposition. But I kind of feel that his story has unfinished business for the future, so we could see this character again, who knows. Plus we had the service bots, which are pretty generic robots that don't really serve much in the plot, and the remnants, but they the remnants didn't really grab me as much. They look like animated dish cloths. While I like the scene where they taught the Doctor about her past, they reminded me of the Vardens from the Invasion of Time. And for those who don't know, that ain't a good comparison. Let's talk about more positives. I really like how the events of the last episode are still having a lasting impact on our cast. Grace's death is still being felt by Graham and Ryan. Graham thinks what Grace would say if she was on an alien planet. And Ryan is not going to call Graham granddad, yet even though Graham is willing to be there for him and calls him son, but Ryan doesn't want to be treated like a little kid. Again, it's building on tra traits and events from the previous episode and still having a lasting impact with them. Even if you didn't see the last episode, you can tell from the dialogue and acting that Grace had an impact on both Ryan and Graham. There was even a callback to Ryan not being good with ladders due to his dyspraxia, I loved how the Doctor called him amazing and he was able to deal with it under pressure. Again, I think this is good development for him. 
I even like how the Stenza, aka Tim Shaw from the last episode, got a call back, as they're the ones that forced the residents of the planets to make weapons for them. I like the connection that Ryan and Angstrom shared, having both lost their loved ones due to the Stenza. Some might say they don't need to follow up on the Stenza, but I thought it was a great callback. They have a lasting impact throughout the universe, and even made them more of a threat than they were last week. As for Yasmin, I really liked her trying to connect with Angstrom, subtly reminding us of her job as a police officer to help the public and people in times of distress, and even being shut out by her because Angstr to Angstrom, Yasmin is nothing to her because they've just met, which that could be an interesting thing to follow up on. If taken to other periods of time, uh, her job in the 21st century could mean nothing wherever the TARDIS goes. Maybe it's something she has to work on, but maybe she could set out to prove them wrong. Who knows, eh? I could be talking nonsense and it may never come up, but I just think it's an interesting uh, character trait to go up on. However, uh, one of my favourite moments of the episode was her missing her family. Even though they drive her bonkers at times, she still misses the little things about them, like her you know, dad winding her up. A sister wanting her room when she moves out. Just little things like that that's really good. Yasmin is able to relate that to Angstrom, whose family are either in hiding or on the run, and will be able to rescue them if she wins. I loved her advice to Yaz as never take family for granted, which the viewers already know about given Grace's death last episode. As for Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor, once again I think she continues to shine in the role. While well, I felt last week she was a bit too wacky in places, I definitely feel that she's more settled in the role now. While still maintaining a lot of enthusiasm and being the fast talker, this episode showed off more of her serious side, I think. I loved her support towards Ryan climbing the ladder and her desperation to get the TARDIS back, the come to daddy and mummy joke got a laugh from me. Furthermore, I really felt her disappointment in herself when she felt that she failed all her friends when they were still stuck on the planet. You feel that this Doctor helps people and will do that in every way she can, no matter what. My Jodie Whittaker moment of the week was her confusion and even fear towards the remnants calling her the unknown, the abandoned, the timeless child. Her response of, get out of my head, was brilliant, and I love seeing this Doctor be angry and scared at the same time. Now I know Chris Chibnall has said that there'll be no story arcs this year, but could the timeless child be a hint to some... Thing to come in the near future. It might not be, but as a standalone sequence, it was really effective, and I hope future episodes show more of her darker and feared side, but also maintaining her enthusiasm for adventure and helping others. And the Venusian Aikido, brilliant callback to the doctor that made it cool, John Pertwee. Venusian Karate, it's very effective. Hold it long enough, and the subject remains permanently paralysed. In terms of its production values, the episode looked fantastic. The desert with the multiple planets looked gorgeous, and I definitely got a lot of uh, Star Wars vibes from it. Now, I mentioned last episode that the episode being set at night gave the cinematography kind of a minimal impact. This episode made up for it with the golden sand, the clear glistening river, and the atmospheric night. Mark Tandor Wright also relied on close-ups, quite a lot, which definitely helped the dialogue scenes, as we were able to clearly see the actors' faces at times. I just feel they were a bit overused, as we could have seen more of the alien planet, but minor nitpick. Special effects on the remnants were a mixed bag. The CGI looked a bit too rubbery on them, and they seemed a bit too cartoonish to be part of this episode. Uh, Sega Canola, the new composer, also continued to shine with the music, as I said it before, I'm in love with the new theme, and seeing it with the titles was great. I just feel they go very hand in hand. Once again, the music felt very cinematic, if a little intrusive at times, but Akinola continues to prove how much of a talented composer he is. And now time for the what did you guys think section of the review. I put out a tweet on Twitter that asked uh, for my followers to tweet the thoughts below, and I'll read them out in the review, which I'm going to do. Now, uh, only two people responded, but hopefully I'll get more in the coming weeks. But uh, uh, Darren said, one thing that stuck out for me is the overuse of the Sonic. Um, that didn't really bother me too much, but yeah, it does 
feel like that it's continuing the new series trend of making the Sonic a magic wand into whatever we want. Hopefully Chibna will drop it, but it doesn't bother me that much. And finally, Master... And finally, Master Missy ASMR says, Well, the big problem, as you say, is the villains were a non-event in terms of any kind of threat or fear. I was slightly bored, but the cast really shine, and Jolie is deaf Oh, the Doctor for me now. At some point, someone is going to have to come up with good new villains. That's a reasonable uh, reaction to the episode. Yeah, I do agree about Jodie definitely settled in now as the Doctor. I do think this is what this is more of what we're going to see of her as opposed to last week, where she was still in the post-regeneration crisis. And um, slightly bored. Yeah, I have to agree that because the episode was kind of disjointed and it was a bit hard to you know kind of get into it at first. But I think once it got going, after we were introduced to Ilan, it really started to shine. Uh, you mentioned that the cast really shine. Yeah, they do. That I'm really loving this TARDIS team. I just hope they continue to do that for... The rest of series 11 and uh interesting point that about good new villains i do have to agree there because um one of series 11's selling points is that we've got no uh recurring monsters they're all going to be new and uh, it's not a bad idea but i think if you're going to do that you're going to have to come up with great new villains that we can all remember and so far one of them has been good but not great and the other villains, this week's villains, have kind of been naff, but hopefully we get to see more because we're only two episodes in. But yeah, I do agree there. So that's all from the people who uh, responded to my tweet. Thank you for doing that. Um, if you would like to have your thoughts included in the review, just be sure to uh, look out for this type of tweet every week if I'm watching the episode live. And... Uh, and I'll include them in the review if you want to see them, so just keep an eye out. So, to sum up, while the structure is a little sloppy and the villains underwhelming, Series 11 continues to shine with its first alien planet adventure that sees our heroes in dangerous new territories that they must adapt to, whilst continuing to rebuild themselves from their previous loss. With a more subdued but nevertheless enthusiastic Doctor, this new TARDIS team is looking to be something special. With engaging supporting characters and beautiful cinematography, The Ghost Monument is an episode filled with danger and adventure. Well everyone, that's all from me. Be sure to like and share this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the ep episode. And I'll see you all next time when we meet a woman who sat on a bus.